Dragon version 2. Um, although, uh, it'd be nice to go inside. But for that, we will need a comically fast set of stairs. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I think we're in somewhat of an ignominious situation here where, I mean, um, it's not merely the fact that Russia is, is taunting the United States uh, for, for lack of uh, manned access to space, but they're also um, massively overcharging. Um, and I think it's, it's gone even above $70 million. I think it's sort of $76 million a seat that the Russians are, are, are charging. Um, the, the, the quote that we provided, uh, NASA, uh, would allow the, the cost per asteroid to be potentially less than $20 million. So it would, uh, and that, that, is, that assumes a, a, a low flight rate. So in, in a high flight rate, it, it could potentially get to the single digit millions. If my dream of space is that humanity becomes a multi kind of species, that we have a self-sustaining civilization on Mars, and perhaps on the moon and, and elsewhere in, in the solar system, and once we have that established, I think over time that would create a forcing function for the continued improvement in spaceflight technology and eventually we would even go beyond our solar system. I mean, to me that's a really exciting, inspiring future and it's one to which we should aspire. Uh, I sent my plane up with the uh, with, you know, um, and we had to uh, design and, and, and fabricate uh, an antenna that exactly fit in the window of the plane. So we, 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 we slowed over the pizza dish um, and, and, and we were able to do like a double loaded antenna with a pizza dish and point it out the window to get the, to get the thing. Um, yeah, so, so we, we, we got, the, the, the data came through really well but the video was, was corrupted because, because unfortunately when you compress video, um, it's, it's, a, you know, um, it, it's actually it's hard to uncorrupt and compress video because in terms of that lessons learned from Dragon, Dragon 1, I mean, there's certainly a, a lot that we, we learned in every aspect of the vehicle. The, the heat shield technology, the, the, the engine, the great engine technology, uh, orbital maneuvering, um, uh, deorbit, and, and trying to achieve a, a, a precision uh, reentry path through the, 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 the high velocity entry. That's quite a difficult thing. So, well, although Dragon version one lands with parachutes, it actually um, before the parachutes open, it actually is, is, is executing a very precise uh, guided uh, path. Uh, with the, the engines firing um, during re-entry. Over time, we expect uh, Dragon version 1 to be phased out, but we're going to carry both of them in parallel for at least a few years. Yeah, the biggest uh, technology challenge for Dragon version 2 was the Super Draco engine. Um, because uh, that's an engine that has to produce a tremendous amount of thrust, and yet be very light. Uh, it's also got to, uh, to throttle uh, over a wide range. So it's got to be able to go to a very low throttle range, to a very high throttle range. It's got to be able to react very quickly. Um, and it, so that it was quite a tricky thing to develop. Uh, and, and, you know, one of, the, one of the technologies that was really critical to development of the Super Draco engine was the ability to do 3D metal printing. So the, because it, it's quite a complex engine, uh, and it was very difficult to, to, to form all the cooling channels, um, and the, the, the injector head and the throttling mechanism, but being able to print a very high strength um, advanced alloys, uh, I think was, was crucial to be able to create the, uh, the Super Draco engine as it is. The thing that's, that's worth noting is that uh, uh, a lot of what is, is needed on a rocket spacecraft is actually software. Um, we actually hire a lot of uh, our best software engineers out of the gaming industry. And uh, in fact, for myself, I, I started off when I was a kid uh, in terms of ensuring I, I wrote games. That was the thing that I did. So I think. Um, uh, What's special about gaming? Well, I think in gaming, um, there's a lot of smart engineering talent um, doing really complex things. Um, in fact, if you think about a lot of the algorithms involved in, say, a multiplayer uh, online game, um, 
you know, compared to, to, to a lot of the, the math that's involved there, uh, doing a docking sequence is actually relatively straightforward. Um, so, um, in fact, I'd, I'd encourage people who are in the game industry to think about uh, you know, drawing SpaceX and creating uh, next generation spacecraft and rockets, and also probably, you know, uh, for the future we'll create like droids on you know, the surface of Mars and Moon to do things like um, uh, an automated propellant depot and that kind of thing. You sort of need those, those features to have a base of Mars. Well, I think, you know, first of all, I'd say um, in America is probably the only place that um, where, where this would be possible um, you know, for, for a private company to, to get this far. Um, and we were able to attract an incredibly talented team at, at SpaceX. I think we've got a brilliant team of engineers and technicians that uh, really did the, the design and, and construction of this uh, the spacecraft. And, um, and I think uh, having that critical mass of talent is really what's um, enabled me, if you can call it me, it's not really me, it's just you know, it's other people. <laughs> but, um, but I think ha having that critical mass of technical talent is what has enabled us to, to get this far. Yeah, about five or six years after starting the company, we also started getting some support from, from NASA. And, and, and actually, in the, in the last several years, NASA has really been crucial to our success. In fact, we really, I mean, this is something I should have mentioned on stage, is that we really would not uh, be where we are today without the help of NASA. That's an important acknowledgement. You know, SpaceX has a very long-term mission. You know, we, 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 we want to just keep improving rocket technology until there's a, a city on Mars. And, well, that could take a long time. And I think, you know, for the public markets, I suspect that is beyond their normal time horizon. <laughs>